Hello! Welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about like the reward structures or reward lists, one-time rewards, continuing rewards, and having a look at how all of this affects, I guess, our like gacha strategy. And what I mean by that is like, you know, should you prioritize roles? Should you just dump it in? Like, you know, what should you do? Gacha strategy, in my opinion, is very important to every game because like we always have to be able to ration out our resources. So without further ado, let's jump into the rewards and see what our income actually looks like. So guys, there are a couple of things that I want to say before we get into this. First of all is another shout out to Peppy. This is all of his information that he's collated for us. I think the dude really needs to get a wiki. So like, you know, if anyone wants to, you know, bundle up some uh, resources together and make a wiki, that'd be pretty cool. Honestly, it's really tough working out of a Word doc. But second of all, I want to talk about like, you know, this data. Remember guys that this data is only based on what we had in CVT. So it may not be indicative of what we are getting in the official release. Okay, so now that I've got those disclaimers out there and the lawyers can't come for me, let's get into the video itself. We're going to start off with the reward list. So let's have a look at this. And Pepe has done a really good job in like separating them out. He's actually separated it out into one-time rewards as well as like some dailies or reoccurring rewards. So first we've got the activity slash login and this is login for eight days. We've got these guys. So let me introduce you to a couple of the different currencies because it's a, it's a little bit of a handful. First, we've got this one over here, which is a star flare, which is like your rolling ticket. So each one of these corresponds to one roll in Gacha. This over here, 10,000 of this resource is actually like your money, your currency, it is called Nitium. So over here on day two, we have 200 of this thing, which is called Soul Amber. And Soul Amber is essentially like your jemmies. You can use these jemmies to like refresh and stuff as well as convert them into like your rolling currency star flares. Honestly, look at the rest. The others are like equipment or enhancement materials. So I'm not going to talk about them, but let's have a look at this one. So this is a one-time reward, I'm pretty sure, because this is actually quite generous. We've got one roll here. We've got a couple of rolls here. We've got two rolls, two rolls, 10 at the end of day eight, which is really, really good. And so generally my thoughts on this is pretty good. It's it, honestly, it's more than the pre-registration rewards. However, although this looks generous, like it makes re-rolling a lot harder because if you guys don't know pre-registrations or like re-rolling, I think we're only going to be able to like roll like four times maybe. And honestly, that's going to be a real pain. Okay. So this aside, let's move on. We've got the growth rewards, which is also another one-time thing. The good thing about this one is that we get Dana and Dana is a really great solid thunder five-star unit. On top of that, we are also getting some flares over here. So that is quite nice. And you'll notice that we have like the days, like one through to eight up here. However, However, like we don't get too much from them. It's just kind of like your enhancements or upgrades or stuff. It's not going to be too much. I think the star of this reward structure is going to be these star flares down here in which it totals about like 11. Again, keep in mind guys that this is a one-time thing and that we can't expect this. Like honestly, if we could get this like every month, that'd be so dank. Okay, so next we've got the sign in and achievement. So this could be what is like the reoccurring one. And the reason I say that is because it's a lot more like well-balanced rewards. Here you can see that we're only getting like 30, 30, 40, 50. So this might be enough for like one full roll. And then we have a single star flare over here, which corresponds to like potentially another one. So whilst Peppy does have this under one-time rewards, I do think that personally, this is going to be like the monthly login event. And hopefully this is going to form part of our like reoccurring currency income. Okay. So after that, we have achievements down here. So this is another one-time reward. Uh, it's a lot of Lumamba, so it's pretty good. However, again, achievements, one-time rewards, it's kind of whatever. This is another one-time reward thing. So it's 365 days. It's kind of like, it's okay. So what we're saying here is that over one year, we are going to be getting 33 star flares. Not bad. Not bad at all. So if we average this 33 star flares out over this 365 days, so let's say like every month, what this system is saying is essentially we're going to be getting about two star flares every month. However, obviously it's going to be backloaded quite a fair bit because like you can see here, a lot of it we're getting at the very end. Otherwise, I guess you could just like track it like this. So like two, three, two, 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 five, two, two, two. Yeah, something like that. Pretty good system, but hopefully they're going to give us a little bit more in like year two or something. And that this doesn't just like run out. Like after 365 days, that's it. You, you guys are dry. All right, next we've got progression. So this is a decent one because like, how do I say this? If we can expect more frequent content updates, then we can kind of like expect this Lumamba coming in. And so he's mapped out all of the star flares and all the Lumamba and in total, it looks like up to chapter eight, which was the maximum in CBT2. We are going to be getting 16 star flares as well as 7,200 Lumamba. Okay, with that being said, let's move on. We've got star flares, Lumamba down here and we've got Nitium. Nitium is ignored, kind of. So I've been ignoring Nitium because it's kind of like your upgrade currency that you can actually farm. It's like your money, like your meso, you know what I mean? It's like your pesos, you know? So we've got all that. However, this as well as the other one, it gives us kind of an indication of our income per chapter release. It seems to be quite consistent. So it looks like every single chapter, we're going to be getting at least two star flares as well as 900 Lumamba. And then, so if I come down here, it also looks like on every chapter clear, as opposed to this is a mission clear, we are going to be getting three star flares per, except for chapter eight. I hope chapter nine onwards, they're not going to give us Lumamba because those three 
three star flares are pretty freaking dank. Three star flares are worth more than 225 Lubamba. So let's see how to a dog does it. All right, moving on. We've got the extra chapter clears. So this is just like extra missions that we get. Considering we've got a total of like eight chapters. However, we've only had three extra missions. I'm not going to be banking on this one too much. However, this is still quite a nice like level of income because it's like a pretty consistent throughout all of them. But each extra mission, we're going to be getting 150 Lumemba and one star flare. Okay, moving on. We've got the spiral clear. So this is definitely a one-time thing only. So for you guys who don't know what spire is, it's essentially like your endless tower thing, except you can only clear it once. It's kind of like, oh, let's clear floor one, floor five, floor 10, floor 20 kind of thing. So as you're going deeper or deeper or higher and higher, I actually don't know if it goes up or down. You can see that you get more Lumemba. And so this one, you can't count as like your income. 9,600 Lumemba. This is just like your one-time thing. And let's move on to daily rewards. So this is probably where <laughs> I guess our income is coming from. So let's have a look at this properly. We've got like 20 and 30. So we're getting daily of 50 Lumemba income. Over 30 days, we're getting 1,500. And so how many rolls does that equate to? I believe it's actually five rolls. So remember guys that this daily rewards, I think is going to be independent of this sign in reward here. I do believe, and guys don't take this as gospel, but I do think that this is going to be our like monthly sign in reward. And so I do think that we can expect two rolls from this one. And the difference between this one and this one down here is that this is our daily quests. And so hopefully I can say that we are going to be getting both of them in conjunction with each other. And so combining those two, we have 1,500 as well as two more rolls. And so that brings a total of seven for the reoccurring one so far. After that, we also have Dispatch, which is another reoccurring one. And this one has a maximum possible of 80. So you just need a little bit of RNG here. And then down here, we've got a maximum possible of 2,400 across 30 days. So this works out to be, I believe, uh, eight rolls. And so tallying that with the previous seven, we have 15 rolls every month at most. To be honest, I want to take a more conservative average for this one. I think like using the max is not really right. And so I'm going to say like, let's say um, 2,000 or like 1,800, something like that. So instead of eight rolls, I'm saying six rolls instead. And so plus onto the seven from before, we're getting 13 about. So 13 to 15, 15 like maximum. 15 per month is sounding okay so far, but let's keep going. So we've got secret territory next. And this is essentially like your roguelike. So like you go through and then like you go in with the team and you use like kind of set stats and then you can kind of like choose your path as well as your reward to an extent. And so TLDR, like you go through and then at the end of it, you fight a couple of bosses and then you get a bunch of rewards. So this guy actually resets weekly, which is quite nice because it is a source of income. So here we've got a uh, loom embers and text fragments, or we can actually use text fragments to buy stuff from the store. So all my Peppy, it looks like Peppy has not tallied this one up. So let me just do the calculation real quick. And so guys, what you can see is that for every floor, we're going to go 10, 15, 30, and then we have these five floors. So I'm just going to add them up 10 plus 15 plus 30 multiplied by five. And so in total, we are going to be getting 275. So it kind of looks like we're only getting 275 Lumamba for a full clear of secret territory. So that's actually kind of okay. If I multiply that by four, this is going to be the monthly income. So this is saying that per month, we are going to be getting 1,100 divide that by 300. We're going to be getting about 3.66 pulls per month. Wait, that kind of sucks. However, however, guys, there is a silver lining to this. And that is because there are text fragments here. So guys, text fragments they are kind of the silver lining here because you can use these to buy two pulls per week, two whole star flares per week. So that's actually a total of eight plus 3.66. That's an, another 11 for like income, 11 per month onto that. Like, honestly, guys, I've lost count. I'll probably tally it up at the end, but I think the income so far is sounding okay. So guys, just showing you guys some proof of that. So we've got the secret store over here. And so it's in the secret store. You can see we get these uh, convergent star beacons. And so for 2000 of those things that we are getting, in the secret territory, those text fragments, we're going to be able to get two of these convergent star beacons every week. As you can see, this refresh down here is looking like it's every week unless they like kind of gypped me because originally I actually thought that this was like a monthly thing. But yeah, hopefully if this is a weekly thing, this is actually pretty big. All right, let me get out of that and let's go back to the dock. And so where does this put our total rewards into for the first month? 78 pulls, not including this stuff over here. Okay, so what exactly are we going to be doing with 78 pulls? I think that is the real question here and considering this is just like a total rewards for the first month um let's talk about it so just back on my footage over here let me try and make it 1080p so you guys can see a little bit better okay that is actually so clear okay so what have we got here we've got that six star aurorians they have a two percent draw rate over here as you can see everyone is in the pool here and then we've got the five star aurorians down here at a 9.5 percent probability okay so now let's talk about the pity the first thing that you need to see when you look at this is that there is no guaranteed five star aurorian mechanic so in some of the other games like like Genshin Impact, like you're guaranteed like a second rarest unit
unit in temples or an Arknights in the first temples, you guaranteed like a five star, something like that. And so I'm mentioning that because I don't believe that mechanic actually exists here. So the next thing I want to talk about is the pity. So this is very, very similar to Arknights. If you have gotten up to 50 rolls and you have not gotten a six star Aurorian yet, then from your 51st onwards, you will gain an extra 2.5% on top of the 2% base. So what this means is that your 51st is going to have 4.5% chance of getting six star. Your 52nd is going to be 7%. Your 53rd is going to be 9.5%. And as you can see, you're going to be able to hit pity like up at some certain point. I can't count right now. So this is good and bad. And I think we need a little bit more context before we can actually make any like assumptions or decisions. The first thing is that what I'm looking at here is actually the standard banner. Now, what do we know about standard banners in most gadget games? Most of the time, you're not going to be pulling on it. If you are going to be pulling on the standard gacha, usually you're just going to be doing it because you're re-rolling. Otherwise, typically we want to be like rolling on focus banners because typically that is where like either like meta or new units are actually coming out. On top of that, we also have the beginner's banner, which I will actually show you now. So we've got the beginner banner here and the mechanics are right over here. Let me just scrub up a bit. And so the reason that this is important is because like you kind of need to take into account this beginner banner as well as our like 78 initial first month only first clear initial income kind of thing. So if I can imagine what's going to happen, and obviously this is my opinion, this is not the meta. There is no established meta. We have no foresight. We don't know what's going on to be honest, but this to me is probably the safest way to proceed. So if you're re-rolling, what I would do probably is go into the standard banner after your re-roll and throw all of your rolls there. Hopefully there you're going to be able to fish a six star. When you're able to actually fish that six star, I reckon it's time to move on and then you go to the beginner banner. So now that you're on the beginner banner, what happens here is that you are guaranteed a six star here as well. So what this means is that after throwing either your like four or 10 or whatever rolls into the beginner banner and then another 21 in or 20 into here, from the 78, you're going to use about the 30 and then you're going to have two six star Aurorians at least. That is probably my recommendation and what I'm going to be doing like because we have no further information. Then what do we do with the remaining like 48, 50 rolls? In my opinion, you save it. Like I, I really think that this is probably the best thing to do. And there are a couple of reasons for this. A, it's because there is no established meta right now. From a lot of the CBT players, like I only got to play CBT2. It's actually really hard to compare like each of the characters right now. Who are the dominating ones? What are the dominating teams? Stuff like that. And it's for this reason that I really recommend that you save after getting these two six star Aurorians. And then so what we can do after that is remember back to the standard banner, how it has that pity system. What I'm hoping is that these meta characters are actually going to go onto like focus banners. So for example, perhaps like Uriel, perhaps like Raphael, like some of the known powerhouses right now, like probably eventually, like just from experience, they're probably going to get like a focus banner very soon. It might take a little bit, but at least you've saved those 48 rolls. The second reason as to why I am suggesting this strategy is because you can actually probably clear the entire game using a mono blue team. I got pretty <coughs> far, but I've spoken with a lot of people like on the discords and stuff, and most people were able to actually clear the entire like content with just the mono blue team. I really do think that with just two of the six star Aurorians, as well as that guaranteed one five star, you're almost like certainly able to be able to like clear the entire game without spending like a single roll. And so you should save those rolls for either like your wife through or something that's like meta defining later on. And so I know that was kind of a lot to take in. So let me summarize this kind of gacha strategy or approach. If you're really feeling up to it, reroll for the first six star Aurorian on the standard banner. Secondly, proceed with the game and just get a second six star from the beginner banner. And then after that, you save until a meta is formed. From there you save and then go on to get like your 48 or like your 50 or however many rolls we get in the first month. And then let's see from there who exactly is meta if they're going to be getting focus banners, stuff like that. That is it in a nutshell and it is not too hard. Those 48 or 50 pulls or whatever and hopefully by the time we get those banners more than that, hopefully we'll be able to guarantee you that like meta or waifu unit like a month down. And so by the end of month one or potentially month two, you'll have like hopefully at least two six star Aurorians as well as like one unit of your choice from the focus banner. However, I do want to make the caveat of saying and this is all assuming that the focus banner is going to land you that six star Aurorian. As we all know, there are a lot of games that are like, okay, you're going to hit the pity, but actually you're going to actually only have a 50% chance of hitting who you want. And so if it was like a split banner between like Uriel and Gabrielle, for example, man, freaking, I want to cry. But to be honest, I think like this strategy puts you in a better position to actually go for that 50-50 at least. It's better than to just like blow it all at the very start and just like whatever it, right? There is one more thing that I do want to talk about and that is kind of like spending on refreshing. Kind of made the assumption that every single Lumamba that we are going to be getting is going to go towards star flares or rolling. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to insist on like refreshing and I think it's okay. So just to reiterate, and I don't think Peppy has the data here, but like each like refresh of stamina is going to cost about like 30 to 40 to 60 of the Lumamba. And so some people are going to recommend like refreshing 
refreshing every day. Refreshing up to three times, and I believe that's 30 plus 40 plus 60, which equals about 130. 130, depending on which banner you're running, is either one roll or half a roll. And of course, assuming that the Lumamber consumption for the banners is gonna stay constant, you guys can make the decision there. Do you want to speed up your progress by a fair bit, to be honest, in exchange for half a roll to one roll a day? Or would you rather just save all of that up and use it in rolls later? There is no right answer to this. It's more about your play style. A lot of people like to go and rush and clear content. The only thing that would like really like push this in one direction for me or not is like the unlock of secret territory. I believe secret territory is unlocked like quite early on. And so this is not a concern. And the reason that I am concerned about it is because like if for example, the game launches and then secret territory is going to reset in like two days or something, you're gonna have to rush secret territory. And just so that you can be able to clear it like and get those loom members and get those uh, roles. So it's for these kinds of reasons, unlocking content or being strong enough to clear content that you would refresh because it might enable you to get more roles. But generally speaking, I think for the more casual players, like it's not a mistake to save it unless again, like the scenario that I just described actually happens. Okay guys, I think that's kind of it for this video. Hopefully this is going to be a shorter one, but also hopefully you guys are going to understand like where we went with all of this. Like I took a look at all of these um, one-time rewards. I kind of made the distinction in what I believe is going to be like the recommended or not the recommend by like the expected income. And then with all of this information, as well as the gadget information, we had a look at the banners and then I kind of gave you my thoughts on like what we should be doing with all of these resources. Hopefully that all makes sense. And I don't think there's actually much left to say. And so let's wrap up the video. Okay, guys, I've got a secret message for you guys. And that is a secret territory. Guys, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because I put a lot of time and effort into these. And again, a massive shout out to Peppy because he puts a lot of time and effort into collating these informations. So yeah, if you guys drop that comment down in the comment below, it just lets me know that you've actually made it to the end of the video. And so I am really appreciative of it. With that being said, if you guys have found this video kind of helpful or mildly entertaining, or you kind of just like it, then consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow, and all of that. But otherwise, there is nothing left to be said. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.